Radhe Radhe, everybody. Thank you for the invitation to read. We will continue today with verse 11 from Vilap Kusumanjali. O Sumuki, fair-faced girl, when will I, even in a dream, be justified in calling my head the highest limb? Uttam Anga of my body by beautifying it with the glistening fragrant pollen of your lotus feet. So repeat the verse. O Sumuki, fair faced girl. When will I, even in a dream, be justified in calling my head the highest limb of my body by beautifying it with the glistening fragrant pollen of your lotus feet? Notes. The more intense Sri Raghunath's spiritual vision of Radha and Krishna's pastimes was, the more intense the suffering of separation becomes when the vision disappears. And the greater his eagerness in Sadakavesh becomes to experience Swamini's rarely attained form, qualities, and pastimes again. Shripad Palade Fitabushana Rade Chakshuji. Maybe we can just stop here in the beginning and try to feel the words of Raghunath. Because from the beginning, when we enter in his feelings as much as we can, it is much more easier to continue to properly relish through the listening and to flow in his feelings and hoping that some drops of his feelings will reflect on our hearts. So, he's saying here, actually, that he wants to be marked with, with Radharani's pollen from her lotus feet. So he said, my Uttama Anga, the highest part of my Anga, of my body, is the head. And I want to put the pollen from the soles, from the feet of your, my dear Swamini to put in my head. So I want to be marked, and in that way, I will receive your full blessings, that I can serve you with full love. So here this Uttama Anga, the highest part of the body, the head, 
it's also very appreciated in material world. When someone is beautiful, he has nice, beautiful eyes, proportional dimension of the face, nose, lips, ears. This person is considered beautiful. And also, not from the outside, someone who is very clever, very smart, very intelligent, mentally powerful, he's also considered valuable person. And everyone is appreciating, at least everyone is appreciating him. So this head is also praised in the Vedas like uh, Brahmanas, who are the crown jewel in social society because they are considered quite intelligent. But this is all materialistic considerations and this is not for which Raghunath is praying. He doesn't want to be praised like a very smart person, very beautiful person, and so on. He wants to be proud because Radharani's not to embrace him, but she puts a pollen from her lotus feet. So we can see and feel here in his words and the expressions how humble is he and at the same time how he is very, very eager. And from Krishna's example also we can see how Krishna is hankering. He is very eager also to receive the red luck or pollen from Radharani's lotus feet on his head or to put the mark of this lotus feet on his chest. He also wants to be marked. Because everyone who is marked with the Radharani's feet, he is marked from tip to toe, he is marked with Mahabhav. So this is desire which appears in our Rasik Acharyas. And they try to give this eagerness to us sadhakas. So in the Western world we know what I am thinking, I am thinking, I am existing. You know. But here is completely opposite. You know. I am feeling. And I have spiritual feelings. It means that sp my real spiritual identity is developing. And for that, everyone requires humility and mercy. Because Raghunath is this words is praying, when will I? When will my Uttama Anga, the highest part of my body, will be beautified, not with the knowledge, not with the austerity, not even with the different jewels, but with your mercy in the form of your pollen from your lotus feet, my dear Swami. 
So when we are listening these words of Premika devotee, we should try to open our hearts as much as we can to feel his feelings. Because this kind of eagerness is very rare. It's not that everyone will receive spontaneously and be able to receive this kind of eagerness in his heart. This is causeless kripa. And this eagerness is coming from the soul like result of the kripa, not from the body, not from the mental conception and considerations, many thoughts with so much intelligence. Yes, I heard, I read this loba, this eagerness is so important, and now I want to invoke that. No, it doesn't work like this. This, is the, this kind of eagerness is a very special eagerness. It's not passionate bodily eagerness. This is the soul eagerness. And it should be received and infused from someone who already are who already are diving in that ocean. So the eagerness which is coming from the body is under the mode of passion. And it will never melt the heart. But the eagerness which is coming from the heart of pure devotee in the soul will melt the heart. And because of the more the heart is more melted, eagerness will be able to, to be more intense and automatically humility, parallel, hand by hand, is going. When we have eagerness from the mode of passion, I want Radharani, I want. Vrindavan, I want Svarup Siddhi, this and that. I want realizations. This kind of eagerness is materialistic eagerness, and the result is that materialistic qualities will arise and become more and more stronger. Ultimately, the bodily consciousness of life will be much more stronger. So to receive the pro real, genuine eagerness, it's causeless kripa which is coming from pure devotee. And it requires quite a lot of humility. Because the humility will attract love, pure love, and the more pure love is appearing in the heart, humility will be much more intense. Humility attracts love, and love, pure love, prima, pure love, is nourishing natural humility. So this is the this is the point which we should feel and learn from Raghunath and all other Rasik devotees, but in this case, specific what Chakshuji chose. Because now, in this beginning verses of Vilapa Kusumanjali, Raghunath is preparing himself to start a morning seva. And we can see here with 
which kind of consciousness he is preparing himself. In first words, he is saying he is praising his Guru Manjari. And practically, he is speaking how much is important to have close relationship with the Guru. In three verses, in the beginning of Vilapa Kusumaja, directly he starts without any other introduction, because it's not necessary to speak introduction. Introduction is my beloved Rupa Manjari, my best friend, and so on and so on and so on. So he is preparing his consciousness, and because he is preparing his consciousness, he is showing us how we should be ready to approach slowly, progressively, but slowly and surely with the proper consciousness and feelings. Shripad Baladev Vityabhushana writes in his commentary on the first verse of Srila Rupa Goswami's Utkali Kavalari. When the devotee cannot experience his beloved deity anymore, because his spiritual vision vanishes, his heart melts with eagerness. And the great feeling of humility surges up in his heart. Then he cries incessantly, realizing how unqualified he is. This is the symptom of someone who attained this rare level of bhakti rati. He is very aware about his unqualification. But it, although he is one of the most qualified person, he doesn't think about himself like this. Because his heart is completely pervaded with humility and eagerness. It can sound, from a materialistic point of view, it can sound contradictory, because usually our experience is when we are eager for something, you know, we don't think that I'm not worthy enough. If I think that I'm not worthy enough, then I will not try to fulfill my eagerness and my desires. It's negative conception, negative emotions. But in the soul consciousness, in the spiritual consciousness, it's completely opposite. The more I eager, the more I am humble. The more I humble, I feel that I'm unworthy. And this unworthiness brings me to another level of more intense eagerness. So this is the reason why people who are so absorbed in jnana cannot understand the bhakti. Because bhakti is not something to understand. Bhakti is something which we have to relish through loving relationship. Rade, Rade. Please, Udavaji, help me. Yes, Rade, Jai, Jai Gurudev. I'm continuing on this point. 
it's the uh, it's more a question for you, my dear Garangaji. In the first line there of the commentary, Ananda Das Babaji takes up this matter of suffering. And he says, I don't have the text, but he says something like the, the more beautiful the, vi the vision is, the more our suffering becomes. And this suffering is, is central to bhakti. We read about it all the time. But it's, for some of us devotees, it's difficult to understand. I wonder if you could help to explain this, this relationship between greed, pleasure, and suffering. I'm sure, Udavaji, that you know that, <laughs> that you are very well in this, but you are giving me a chance to serve, so I will try my best. Actually, it's not possible at all to understand the pain of separation from material bodily consciousness of life. And the more we try to understand it from our intellect, let's say, or even material feelings, the more we will be entangled in hopeless situation. So to really relish separation in loving Loving separation, this is the important thing, loving separation for beloved, from beloved Ishtadev. Sadaka needs Kripa. Because in that separation, which is culmination of all emotions, is the present most intense love. And we have to try to put our manovrit, chittavrit in these words of acharyas to slowly start to receive proper meaning and proper feeling behind this kind of realizations. Sometimes we are giving material examples just to give a hint, but this is not, <laughs> it's indescribable, actually. We say something when you are in love with someone and he is not close to you, you suffer in the love, in separation, you know, and it also brings some relishment. But we are not acquainted with spiritual relationships. We, because from the materialistic point of view, materialistic in intellect, we cannot feel, we don't have experience that painful separation can be so tasteful and rust. For that, we really need Kripa. It's not something that we should, we can attain by our own endeavor. And this kind of Kripa is coming from those persons who are relishing loving separation. We cannot learn. But we, through our ears, we can just try through this body, try to open the heart for these pure feelings if we have a shraddha, faith, that this is the highest feeling. If we don't have a faith, in the words of Acharyas, we will not open the heart. 
But if we really have a faith, okay, I don't have this kind of realization, but I have full faith in Raghunathas, Babas, my Gurudev's words, that in, in the words of Radharani, in the words of Krishna even, both of them, they feel intense, intense, undescribable pain of separation. But this kind of pain of separation brings them indescribable ecstasy and putting them in indescribable lilas where they are exchanging their love with full feeling of separation. This is the mystery of pure love, of Prema. And the special feeling which Gaudiya Vaishnavas are bringing and caring to us is this feeling of separation. Now devotee can ask very simple and question, how I can feel this kind of separation if I don't have a vision like Raghunath? It's a normal question, but this kind of question is also a little bit from the mind. A little bit from the mind. But it can help devotee to understand that he can start this process of bhakti. He can start with just little drops of feeling of separation. The more separation is intense, 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 it said, relishing will be much more tasteful, like a meeting. Intensity of separation brings more intensity in a meeting. And after that strong meeting, which you very nicely, Udavaji, notice, where Raghunath has a meeting with Radhika, he has, the more intense Raghunath spiritual vision of Radha is, of pasta, the more intense suffering of separation is. So the more intense meeting is, in the moment of separation, the suffering is much more intense. And it brings clashing in the moment of meeting, then the clashing of emotions are coming. And the culmination of that is Madana Kemahaba. Culmination is actually. And in the Lila, we can see it in Prema Vilasa Vivarta. They love the, each other so much that they are in embrace to each other, especially feeling of Radhika also. But in one moment, they think we are separate. So this is the action of Yoga Mai. So, all our acharyas are trying to encourage us to feel the separation as much as we can, but like a positive emotion, not negative emotion. Positive emotion in the sense that it will bring me more closer to my beloved Ishtar. And I have to have only faith. What will happen? I don't know. When it happens? I don't know. But I have to nourish the faith that this kind of separation and connected will bring more eagerness and more love in my heart. And it will melt my heart. Because I need 
my heart to be melted, not like this, so hard. And when this first reason why separation is so important for sadaka, I speak for sadaka, because this kind of separation is making a purifying first the heart. Cheto darpanamancha. When devotees chanting, he should feel some separation, at least a little bit. Because this is the sign that he really wants to attain a goal. If he doesn't feel separation, okay, I am indifferent. They have to give me kripa <laughs> for my benefit and my happiness. You see, it's completely materialistic way of practicing. So the meaning of separation is really to purify our heart. And there is one also Prabhupada said in one place, I think in one lecture, he said why separ uh, cultivating the mood of separation is very important. Because it protects devotee from mentality of Prakrita Sahajya. Prakriti, materialistic. The mood of separation, real mood of separation, when he is connected with the separation of Rasik devotee, protecting myself to not speculate, to not try to imitate with my body, you know, but just to be humble, determined, and patient. But if we cannot tolerate separation, natural reaction is that we want to become something more than we really are. This is another moment in Sadaka's practicing also separation. Many things can be said. Really many things. So can learning. Oh, just a question for because your your words as always go straight to our hearts. So you begin the melting process, and we're very grateful to you for this. But what I hear, what I understand you saying is that the default position, the basic constitutional position for our spiritual practice is longing. That's what I understand you saying, that the basic position for bhakti, for our practice, is longing, not having but longing, being in the longing. This is sadaka, sadaka wish. And from sadaka wish, the words is starting, when we lie. So this is sadaka. Raghunath understood what he lost. And natural praying is when we lie, even in a dream. This, this is, I didn't want to speak about that now, but it's coming. Uh, even in a dream, what does it mean even in a dream? Maybe in my awake state of consciousness, I cannot think on you. But believe me, it's merciful to me that even in a dream, I don't want to dream foolish things. I want to dream you. Another way how we can understand is also, I am so thinking 
intensively in my awake state of consciousness that I don't want to lose this kind of thoughts and feelings during my sleep. Because I have to rest this body at least few hours, but I don't want to waste a second without thinking and feeling on you. So please, now the moment is very important, please appear in my dream. I need your Kripa also that you appear in my dream. When Radharani appears and Lilas appears, Guru Manjari, Guru Dev is appearing. It's not ordinary dream. This is the dream which is nourishing devotees' heart and consciousness. Spiritual, in other words. Yes. It's the dream, it's the dream of what is real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, he said, when in a sadhakavesh, even in a dream, when I have to sleep, I want that by your mercy, I justified my uttama anga with your this beautiful, shining, merciful pollen from your lotus feet. So this is the expression of deep, pure, loving emotions of Raghunath, who never forgets that he is a Tulasi Manjari. I don't know what Gurudev will say. It will be so helpful and nice. Srila Raguna Das Goswami is exactly in that situation. In his Svarupavesh, he says, You are rarely seen directly. Will I, at least in a dream, be justified to call my head? the highest limb of my body by wearing the fragrant pollen of your lotus feet on it. Only when it wears this fragrant pollen, my head is justly called my highest limb. You hear the words wearing, I want to wear, I want to wish the dress of your nectarian pollen. This is my ornament, this is my dress. I want to wear, not only just to put on my head, I want to wear and to accept, I want to be completely naked and aware to wear your pollen neck, pollen uh, over all my head and actually all over my body. Because this pollen is your Mahabhav. And I want this kind of dress. I want to wear this kind of dress. This is my ornament your Mahabhav. And in that moment, I see myself like embodiment also of that Mahabhav in the bad form. Wearing Radharani's clothes, Prashad, which she gave, to Sadaka, through Siddha Pranali. 
is the most valuable and precious thing. And this is Kripa. Because these cloths, these pollen, these ornaments, they are Mahabala because they are touched by Mahabala. Sari of Radharani was touching her hips, her legs, her breasts, the upper part, her shoulders, and she gave it to my Guru Manjari, to me. And this is Kripa. Wearing the pollen, fragrant, fragrance of Radharani's love, I'm wearing. I'm not just putting, you know, like in material body. No, no, I'm just diving in this pollen, in this fragrance. This is the question of bhajan. How intensely he desires this. Although Raghunath understands that he desires something which is hard to attain, he cannot give up hoping. Although I see that I am unworthy, My mind is still greedy for your attributes. Although he sees that he is completely unqualified, his mind is still illuminated by the hope for getting their sweet mercy. Erogenes mentioned one symptom of bhava, one symptom of eagerness, one symptom of real genuine eagerness is humility, but another symptom is hope. So this is the target for us sadakas. This kind of eagerness, this kind of hope, and this kind of humility. This is the, our target. For Raguna, this is the normal position. But by listening, we sadaka, ha we have opportunity to target our mind and heart on his attainment. So he said again, although I see, I see, I'm completely aware that I'm unworthy. Rupa Goswami is also saying this. All other Goswamis are saying this. Why he is saying this? It's natural humility. Words of someone who is natural, mood of natural humility. But he knows. So many advanced devotees cannot approach Radha Mohan in Vrindavan. So who am I and where am I comparing with them that I have this kind of desire? But I cannot help myself. I simply have this kind of greediness. And this kind of greediness is coming from Radharani and her maidservant. Not by 
like Gurudev said, but my effort. Srila Rupa Goswami wrote in Utkali Kavalari, O King and Queen of Vrindavan, although the greatest souls were not able to get your direct audience for even a moment, this fallen soul desires it, swallowing his fear and his shame. But what is my fault in this? Who will not be intoxicated by the ever fresh sweetness of your qualities? I swallow my fear. I swallow my awe and reverence towards you. I swallow all conception that you are supreme personality of Godhead and Goddess. I swallow my unqualification. This is the sign of absent, uh, um, of someone who doesn't have false ego. When we really, when real genuine greed appears, this kind of person doesn't care about anything. Is it a proper? It's not proper. It's okay or not okay. Is it, is it according to the Shastras or not? Maybe I will end in the hell. I don't care for that. Because greed is my inner power which is bringing me to attain that goal. And if I cannot attain that goal, I don't care for anything else. You can offer me whatever you like. You can offer me position. You can offer me chair. You can offer me money. You can offer me whatever you like. Husbands, women's, children's, cars, jewels, whatever. But I'm sorry. And even I, if I make offense to you, I don't care. Because I only want you. Can we imagine situation in which Raghunath is saying, Oh Radhe, my beloved Swamini, I am yours, I am yours, and please take me to your lotus feet. And if you don't do it, if you don't appear to me, if you don't give me a chance to serve you, what is the use of serving Krishna? <laughs> what is the use of living in Radhakund? Can you imagine how far away his, his eagerness is bringing him? Because this is the genuine eagerness. What is the use of Krishna? What is the use of Radha Kunda? I see this Radha Kunda like an empty um, uh, mouth of a tiger. Mouth of the tiger. Yes, Chakshuji. Mouth of the tiger. Can you imagine this? We should try to imagine. Not because we can do it. <laughs> but we should try to put little our consciousness and heart to imagine which kind of feelings are present in the heart of devotees who is relishing the full rasa because like gurudev is always saying one pointed his eagerness brings him to the position of one pointness eagerness and eagerness and nothing else and this kind of eagerness is appearing in the soul And I'm praying and I'm crying because I cannot pray and cry properly to attain this eagerness. 
because my prayers are not proper. They will not attract the subject of my prayers, the goal of my prayers. They are not genuine. genuine. So I am praying to have a genuine prayers. And what I am doing to do this, I have to swallow my fear. I have to swallow my false ego. I have to swallow my shame. Who, I, who am I? How can I dare to have such desire? And Rupa is very nicely said, but it is not my fault. You are so intoxicated. <laughs> you intoxicated me. I'm like a drunk person who doesn't care, who looks him, what they are talking behind his back, what will happen, in the, he will imprison or not. And this kind of eagerness, it's not possibly, possible in the bodily consciousness of life. So we should pray to somehow at least a little bit overcome this strong condition, life and bodily consciousness of life. But when we understand really what is our goal, then the prayer will be much more intense and devotee can really swallow his fear and shame and say when I think on your merciful quality then it gives me so much hope your mercifulness is my hope But not hope for this Goranga, this body. <laughs> there is no hope for this body. Hope for my eternal soul, my eternal spiritual identity. This kind of hope. I'm sorry. <sighs> Udabaji escape. Gurudev doesn't want to help me. No one wants to share anything. Chakshuji is just reading. <laughs> you are really poor, Goranga. <laughs> but you help us so, so deeply. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much for your inspiration. And for your diving. We are so absorbed in hearing. Our voice is a choked up. Yes. It's not a fair, my dear. Sri Raghunath's heart is greatly agitated when he relishes Sri Mati's sweetness and beauty and the sweetness of her attributes and pastimes. And now comes a very interesting comparison. Just as Agastya Muni once drank the water of all the seven oceans, Raghunath does eagerness. Now also drinks the ocean of his patience and dries it up completely. Raghunath does says eagerness drinks the ocean of his patience and dries it up completely so it's mentioned here the quality of Raghunath and one of his quality devotional quality is that he is the ocean of patience 
He's not ocean of rush. He's ocean of patience. <laughs> and but his strong eagerness ultimately burst out from this ocean of patience and dried up completely that ocean. And he said, now I cannot survive. Please, please be merciful. Because I know that in your appearance, my dear Rade, there are seven oceans At least seven, unlimited oceans, but at least seven. <laughs> Compassion, sweetness, elegance, your loving pastimes, your motherly affection. All these feelings are like oceans. And my ocean of patience is always diving in your oceans of qualities. But now I'm sorry. I will swallow my fear. I will swallow my shame and our worthiness. And I will cry to you with full hope. Please help me. Patience. It's one of the very important quality of devotee. Because of the patient, devotee is helping his heart to condense more and more and more and more pure feelings. And in one moment, like in this steam pot, how we call it, this condensed, patiently condensed emotions will burst out. And for that we need to hide patiently our emotions. And we can learn from our Gurudev and from all other Acharyas. They just open a little bit, but they close immediately with so many words, other words, activities, confusing activities, because they are hiding. The expertise of the Acharya's bhajan can be seen in the sweetness of their activities. Taraka Rupena Siddha Rupena Chatrahi. Outside activities are the result of inner bhajan. And inner bhajan is visible in external activities. They are going hand by hand together. This is why Gurudev is also saying, if you want to become Anjali, you also have to learn how to serve, how to feel, how to behave like a Manjari in your sadhaka body. And this is very difficult for us. But this is our practice. It's not practice, you know, to wake up in a three morning, chant two, three lakhs. Behavior is the practice. Real practice, inner practice. 
And like many times Gurudev is saying, then from the power of your bhajan, intensi uh, intensity of your bhajan, other things, favorable and unfavorable, will also set in the proper, sit in the proper place. And we can see from example, living, this is the reason why we need living example. Because we should see, hear, and witness someone who is 24 7 engaged in Seva because of love, not because he is workaholic. Because of love. We need this living example. And this living example will penetrate in our heart, even unconsciously. When a person on the devotional path is attacked by Maya, he will commit offenses and he won't be able to relish the joy of devotion. How sweet are the teachings of the Acharyas? When Prasad is being taken, they say, Beware of saints, don't become immersed in enjoying the tongue now. Remember that you are here only to taste the remnants of the Lord's foodstuffs. In this way, all physical activities like sleeping and eating should be performed as items of bhajan. When these things are seen, as worldly activities, the devotee is deceived. Same activities, eating, sleeping, working, whatever, taking care about kids, parents, wives, maintaining the car. Same activities, if are done with the mood of service, for beloved Ishtadev, our devotion and the same activities in the absence of that mood is actually Maya, shortly to say. Same activities. This is the, in one way, this is the mystery of bhakti, but in another way, this is the simplicity of bhakti. In this verse, Sri Raghunath prays to the lotus feet of Srimati in his Svarupavesh. How sweetly he addresses her with Ai Sumuki. How many sweet Leelas he remembers when he sees her beautiful face. Krishna is the amorous Dira Lalita hero who is carefree and controlled by his sweethearts. He is not encumbered with maintaining the world. Day and night he plays with Radha in the groves of Rindava. In this way, he makes his adolescence successful with his love sports. Just like Krishna, Radha is also always absorbed in pastimes. 
And when Krishna sees her beautiful face, like Sumukhi, which is filled with the rasa of Mahabhav, he also becomes absorbed in erotic pastimes, forgetting everything else. Krishna is forgetting everything else when he is embraced by Radharan, when he sees just this beautiful Sumuki, such a fair-faced girl, full of emotions, he forgets everything else. He forgets everyone else. So what to speak about Jiva, who's, who received this Kripa to hear Radharani's voice, he forgets immediately everything, all other sounds. When he sees the face, he forgets everything. What he forgets? He forgets his materialistic way of thinking, feeling, and consciousness, identifying himself like a body. He forgets that. So this is the power of sweetness and beauty of Shimateradara. And because of that forgetfulness, Krishna faints. And it said here, he also becomes absorbed in erotic pastimes. Amorous pastimes, forgetting everything else. Because immediately all his senses go, are meeting in the moment of meeting with Radhika, brings him in this kind of in state of consciousness that he forget everything else. She is the one who can invoke in Krishna these kind of feelings, no one else, especially outside of Vrindavan. All different Radhika's expansions, they can come together and they cannot evoke the drop of this intensity for amorous pastimes in Krishna's senses. So this is the Krishna which we like to serve and worship, who is completely mad for our beloved Radharani, for, who forget everyone else, just by looking at her sumuki face. There are exquisitely beautiful faces that carry a golden and blue luster are beautified by ornaments of ecstatic love. Their complexions are golden and blue, and their garments are blue and golden, showing that they carry love for each other in their hearts, and they are yearning for each other. A yearning from each other? And they are feeling so intensively 
each other. That in one moment, their, their feelings are becoming like a one. And this kind of pure love, Rasikacharyas are calling pranai. Oneness in the heart. They are so close, intimate with each other. They are becoming one, not in an impersonal way, but one in the same feelings, rhythm of the heart. And the sign, outside the sign, that they, they are always in this pranay mood, actually, even when they are separated, is that Radhika is wearing constantly. And very often, blue sari on her Mahabhav body. And Krishna is wearing yellow, golden dhoti around his hips. Because in that way they are showing, I am always thinking about my beloved. I am putting her clothes, I am putting his clothes, the color of his body, his emotion, I'm putting all around myself and I feel his fingers, the touch of her hand, his hands, embraces, kisses, all over my body. This is the sign of pranay. The dress which Radha Mohan are wearing the most are actually the sign of their pranay. With his mother, he is a child. With Bhutana, he is omniscient. And with Radharani, he is ignorant, mukta, or enchanted. When he lies in her arms in the kunja at daybreak, his godhood is swallowed by Radharani's Mahabhav. You see? Because of the Krishna, uh, because of, sorry, Radharani, Krishna swallowed his own identity like a supreme personality of Godhead. In the same way, Rupa, Raghunata, they are swallowing their fear and shame to approach with full eagerness and hope to Radharani. It means no one can hold any other identity in front of Radharani than his natural, swabhav, natural identity. Krishna is swallowing. It means that he is forgetting. He doesn't care anymore that he is supreme person in other places than in Vrindavan, that he is supreme personality of Godhead, and that others are worship him. He doesn't care about that. Because in the Vrindavan he is Dira Lalit, enchanted, intoxicated, with Radharani's sweetness, beauty and love. The parrots sing in the trees and he doesn't even remember that his mother may be wondering where he is. He doesn't sleep 
This is called rasalasa, divine romantic fatigue. His absolute knowledge is then pervaded by Radhika's absolute love. Ah, Radhe, please again. His, his absolute knowledge is then pervaded by Radhika's absolute love. So, absolute truth is condensed like Gurudev was emphasizing so much in the last days. The essence of absolute truth is actually absolute love, not absolute knowledge. And someone who has absolute love automatically has absolute knowledge. So, absolute truth is complete only in the form of absolute love. And those devotees, the great personalities who realized that love, they really have absolute, they saw absolute truth, and they are serving and they are closing, close very much to this absolute love in the form of Shimateradara. This is the essence. Last time, and I don't know, maybe during this week, Gurudev with devotees were reading by Prabhupada and also in some other places, I don't know. But this is the point, actually. Absolute truth really means absolute love. And in absolute love, everything else is inside. Mood of controller, mood of enjoyer, mood of someone in knowledge, and this is the real science. Absolute science, which we have opportunity to listen from devotees who relish, who witness this absolute truth. Yeah, we can listen for a little They are. Yeah. Oh, Gurudev, please. So, what is that? Is language? Some, some, Italian, this Latino. Latino, Latino, Sam Ambona, Sam Ambona, Sam Ambona, Sam I'm talking wrong that I can practice more. Highest. And Srimad Bhagavat Prabhupada introduction. First, first line start with this introduction. See, and he say that controller is the Lord, and the Huh? What? Absolute. Absolute truth is not in one level. Same. What means same level? What is its meaning? Take Srimad Bhagavat. It's not in one level. Why this say? Because this is not one thing. This is not a controller. This is something else, and they are not in same level. Mm. 
if you want to see this level, Chaitan Chaitamrit Adi Lila for Canto, you can see. Radhe. And this is where the source of all love, what is the line? The all source of energy of love, divine love, is starting that point. That is who you can be. Only Swami Radhika. So what we practice? What? We practice to meditate in controller or absolute truth. And what is the goal? He said the goal of the Srimad, Bhag Srimad Bhagavad to find out absolute truth. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Means not only Srimad Bhagavad, all is scripture. Not only to collect the knowledge, we have to find out the absolute truth. Yeah. Right? These days I forget everything. Even I forget some of Bonam, absolute truth, everything. Sorry. My Gauranga Sundar is the best. I relish so much that I cannot say that. Rather, yes. Rather, very short time. Say more. Although Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the eternal and imperishable one, self-satisfied and so on, he will fearfully return to his own home when the old she-monkey Kakati repeatedly announces Shatila's coming to the Kunja at the daybreak. Krishna takes half a step towards home. Then he turns back to kiss Radha once again. Streams of tears glide from their eyes as they look at each other's faces. The Sakis are crying. They can also not move. Radha and Krishna fearfully look at each other with anxious eyes while they their clothes and their flower garlands fall off. After taking off their ankle bells and other ornaments, they both anxiously go to their own ways. Constantly looking back at each other, until they cannot see each other anymore, trenching their clothes with their tears. Which other lady love can create such a thirst in Sri Krishna, the transcendental Cupid of Rindam.
This cannot be understood without having devotional experience, being in a mundane consciousness. Shri Shukadev says, Beware, O devotees, he who maddens the whole world is not the ordinary Cupid. He is the spiritual enchanter of Cupid. The Kamagana Vigraha, the embodiment of intense desire. So I just want to say shortly and quickly. Shukadev Goswami time. Rade, sorry. Shukadev Goswami is warning the listeners and readers of this kind of subject. Because the loving amorous pastimes between Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan are like a human. Nara Lila. But if we are not aware, and this is why reason he is saying, beware. That they are transcendental personalities, and their love is completely transcendental, pure, above all material considerations, and their loving, sometimes very erotic pastimes, they are not belonging at all to the humans. We cannot compare with the humans this kind of pastimes. We will drink the salty oceans. And this is the reason why it's said that one of the oceans of Radharani where she is swimming is the salty ocean. Salty oceans can refresh the person by looking to that ocean, some peace of mind can come and senses. Some relaxations can come by listening the waves of ocean. Person can feel some pleasure. But if he starts to drink that ocean, he will start very sick and very soon die. So by imitating the pastimes of Radha and Mohan and putting them down on the ground without awareness that they are always pure and transcendental, devotee can come in the trap and he can, he can kill his spiritual life. So it's always very good to remember that all these beautiful, sweet, enchanted pastimes between Radha and Mohan are meant for the soul, not for this body. And they are transcendental, like the soul is transcendental. So the tendency of the conditioned person is to forget it. And try to understand and feel through his own materialistic senses this loving pastimes. But this is like drinking the salty ocean. And Sadaka should always remember and be aware. No, no, this is not. If I don't understand, it's okay. It's better to don't understand than to wrongly understand. Because it's very difficult to correct wrong understanding. 
If someone doesn't understand, time will come, he will understand and feel. But it's very, very difficult to correct wrong understanding and approach in sadhana. And for that reason, we should learn how to properly follow anugatya, the feelings, thoughts, and activities of perfect devotees. I just wanted to say, because it's here in commentary. Maybe it's too long. Yeah? Chakshuji, as you like. Gurudev and others. Yeah, we can finish here because anyway okay. we have... Gurudev said one, two lines more, please. Srila Jiva Goswami writes in his Doshani commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam verses 10.32.2 Radyumna, who belongs to the Chaturvyuha, the quadruple phalanx of Lord Vishnu in Tvaraka, is directly Cupid, the god of love. And Sri Krishna is again his origin. Just as the power of seeing is the origin of the eyes, or the eye of the eyes. So Sri Krishna is the inciting power of Cupid, the one who agitates even the mundane agitator Cupid with just the slightest drop from the ocean of his all enchanting power. So who can overcome Monday Cupid? No one. Without special mercy of possessor of that Cupid. But Radharani's made servants. But the Kinkaris are serving her who enchants even him. Chagat Mohan Krishna Dahara Mohini. Krishna is the enchant of the world, but Radha enchants even him. Being thus enchanted by Krishna, finally assumed her mood and complexion. Sri Lochandas Thakur sings, He meditated on Radha with his heart. That can be proven by his appearance with his golden body. Which surrendered Kinkari will not be eager to attain such a sublime service. Why does Krishna stand in his threefold bending form? Just to be able to touch Radhika's shirt with his heel. Only the Rasika devotees know this. So this is the revealing why Krishna is in Tribanga form. But also we can remember that Radhika is taking this posture also, Tribangini. 
three bangi and in that way she is a chanting all worlds together with embodiment of cupid the source of cupid mohan he is becoming a mohan completely intoxicated when he observe this elegant lavanya position of shrimati radhika in three bangi form so from the point of manjari bab we can see that krishna is taking this universal so attractive all attractive form of three bangas just because of radharani and manjari so always remembering yes my radhika she has a better posture of this three bangi much more elegant other devotees they see other things but kinkari sir this is one of the angles hmm. radhe radhe